Hello guys and welcome back to Supreme Ruler 2030 with our China playthrough which has had so much setup but we're through most of it by now mostly just down to upgrading our units. I have begun or resumed looking around the Americas and the rest of the world for any more potential allies. Most countries are like on the cusp of wanting an alliance but also just Barely they don't. So if we can find a straight island like the Grenadines, for example, and we find one or two of those, we can get our relations with the world up high enough so that everybody else that's on the cusp says yes, and it will be like a big snowball effect. Also, our money's doing great. It's heavily dependent on consumer goods in trade, seeing that's one of the only things we're positive on. However, electricity seems to be a big, big problem for us. So we're going to need to make electricity before I even go to war. I think the focus is going to be number one, making sure our finances are stable, but also just getting self-sufficient in a couple ways. And I don't mean like fully self-sufficient. We don't really need that, but we don't have enough electricity and it's causing problems in factories. We're using too much. I want to expand indie goods so I can build more. Okay, that's great, but there's not enough electric power to fund any more factories. We can't even manage to import it. So I need to make more. These goddamn Tibetans ran away with some of my hydro plants. Just me enjoying my inefficient hydro plants. But hey, it's single player. Why shouldn't I, you know? Let's find places where we can get some more hydro plants building. We could definitely squeeze a couple more in here. Now, the one thing I don't know is how many can we squeeze in here? Anywhere I can fit hydro, I like to prioritize it. Definitely. If we're building hydro, we definitely don't need coal here. I'm not a big fan of using coal. I prefer to export raw materials and then rely on not raw materials as much as possible. But I just like min-maxing space in general. It was also this spot right here where we could fit a few. I know you can't just fill a hex anymore. I remember that much. Put another one there. Let's just find places that I can fill. We're building eight, nine, and I would generally like to get... Okay, so that's ten building. I don't know how much of this we can afford. Our inflation is low, and I've already experienced in 2030 that building stuff is not as big on that as it used to be. So let's get rid of this agriculture. We probably don't need that there. I'm just going to unpause and we're going to let that run. I'm going to see how that goes. We're currently building 12. I'd like to get some more building because we'll definitely need some more building. But we also want to make sure we don't go too crazy. If I, I could get one, two. See, I want to get three going. All right, that is three. So that's 15 building. That's good enough for me. We'll see how that works. I don't need that as a message. Thank you very much. Looks like Serbia will take an alliance with us. Good. That's another one. One by one. I will ally the entire world is China. The worst nightmares of Republicans will come true. China will eclipse America. I don't know if that's the goal of this, by the way. I don't know if this will ever bring us into conflict with America, but wouldn't that be funny? We will eclipse them as the People's Republic of China, a.k.a. China 2. Okay, I'm starting to hit that domino effect right now of just getting more and more countries. We might see Mexico here. We just got Trinidad. We got Mongolia. Hopefully it doesn't ask me to kill Mongolia. Mongolia doesn't theoretically have anything I need anyway. So I just ally literally everything that I can when I do these campaigns because, well, I can. And if I do ever need to betray an ally, well... We have time to deal with the repercussions, given that it is, of course, single player. We're starting to get some nice chains of alliances being made. We got some holdouts, but... Okay, Brazil has no interest, apparently. Mexico did, and hopefully that can sway Brazil. Sometimes a lack of interest just means ask me again in a moment, I've noticed. Yeah, we're going to light up South America. I can send it through to Ecuador, Paraguay, more and more agreeing. Maybe even Argentina soon. For every one of these that goes through, we might be able to get another one, another one, another one. Make the whole world love us. Make it so even if we do start running low on money, there will be someone willing to send us money for free just for being their happy dandy ally. 
The cost of industry goods is actually like the profit margin is going away. Even as I start building more and more stuff. However, our electricity production is going up or our demand is going down. The AI has been raising the price of a lot of these goods. So that would definitely reduce demand. Not to mention all of our taxes that are definitely starting to take effect. But holy mother of wow. We're not selling any of this shit, right? Right. We are making enough military goods. Barely enough military goods. It's not profitable to sell them right now, which I'm not surprised. Even with that little bit of hydro building, our inflation is actually still going down. So our people can definitely support more building. It's just a matter of can industry goods and our finances support further building. One place where I definitely want to make us as, well, not reliant on the more expensive option would be rubber. Rubber synths are way more expensive than just rubber plantations. And most days we don't even produce the full amount because we just have a stockpile apparently. It's profitable to sell it, honestly, even with the rubber synths, which is hysterical. But rubber synths also use electricity. Rubber plantations do not. So our inflation still going down. And our actual electricity usage is variable based on whether or not it's profitable to make consumer goods in that day. So I'm just gonna, oh wow. The, clicking and the way it detects what hex I'm on is less accurate feeling like ooh, okay um, I'm just gonna make as much normal rubber as I can because there's a very definitive limit to it actually do you have it on this island okay you do there still is a very definitive limit of it and the requirements to make this is not that great and it builds in 60 days two months that's nothing so I'm just gonna build literally as much of this as I humanly fucking can in China which is not a very great amount, so that it all finishes up, and then when it's all done, we can get a good idea of, without spending money on supplying extra supply of this resource to us, how much can we produce naturally, and then we can start getting rid of some of the synths, or at least turning them off, but probably, hopefully, getting rid of them. I really don't know where this is going to take us or what I'm gonna do. I'm not chasing resource goals outside of my country, you know, I could decide to, hey, let me go get some fucking rubber. How do I do that? I don't know, because I'm allying everybody anyway. <laughs> all right, so I'm starting to go through some air units. I'm going to give them some orders to upgrade. Not even all of our land units have upgraded yet because they're like queued up in the same barracks. So they're going one at a time. Um, Let's pause. As you can see here, I've, I've done a thing. Uh... <laughs> I don't know why this game lets you do this in a campaign where I know I have really specific goals and all the time in the world. It's really hard to not do this. i have basically just allied with the entire world. It's like still going. I have 154 allies right now. I don't know how many countries are left. Some of them won't say yes no matter what. I didn't try to do this. I just give an offer to one nation. I get an alliance. That enables another nation to get an alliance because they like me more. And then this repeats almost infinitely until I just run out of countries and everyone's my friend. And <laughs> then, you see I have very low money compared to what I used to have. I just start dying when I'm playing a low GDP country because there's not enough nations to like buy my goods. Even if I'm just selling my goods, it's like even with 100% subsidy rates, literally two times the value of what I sell. I basically just end up having all of these allies sending me money. And then every now and again, I check in and then I just take all the money that's being sent to me. Most of them send it in like the millions, hundreds of millions. Some of them send it in the billions. And then this just repeats infinitely while I'm not really doing much. And then I end up watching the treasuries of the world begin to empty. At least that's what happened in the Russia campaign. Hopefully that part doesn't happen this time. But this is where we are right now. I'm just casually building some stuff while trying to become a little bit more self-sufficient, a little bit more profitable. And I'm just kind of living right now off of the money of all these like hundreds of allies I'm making. Eventually, even that strategy becomes kind of unsustainable. And so I end up going to the world market to get rid of old stuff that I can't upgrade, such as light infantry. That's pretty obvious. That, that would make sense to get rid of. This is what I did as Russia, by the way. Started with 2,000 plus units. 
I ended up getting rid of all of the really old ones just by selling them. Didn't even really look at upgrading as Russia, to be honest. Just got rid of all the old things by selling, and then went ahead and made new, better things and operated with a much smaller, much more elite army. Okay, so while I've been dealing with finances and just seeing how the world economy's doing for the past hour, Eritrea decided to go on like a war spree, just like it's been all quiet up till this point in the game. And then Eritrea says, I'm gonna declare war on Iraq, Liberia, Sudan, Uruguay, all at once. And then like Rojava declared war on Syria. And so the whole Middle East is just going up in flames right now. And then Rojava declared war on Bahrain of all places. I don't know what this is. I've never seen anything like this in Supreme Ruler in my entire life, but pretty much one war was declared by someone and then like seven, eight or nine more wars just started out of literally nowhere. Absolutely none of this really concerns me because it's not really going to affect me in any way. At all. What the hell? Wasn't I allied with Rojava? I could have sworn I was, but now I'm not. And same thing, like, wasn't I allied with Eritrea? I could have sworn I was, but now I'm not. Yeah, they just declared a bunch of wars and lost me as an ally. I didn't do that on my own. That wasn't my choice. And there's no alert about why that would have happened. It just happened. Is that a new mechanic? That's really weird. I don't understand. And Eritrea declares war on Djibouti. I'm only hitting okay. I'm not hitting condemn. I'm not hitting support. I'm not hitting anything. They're just declaring war and whoever hits the declare war button. Oh my fucking God. Would you look at this guy? Whoever hits the declare war button is just losing their alliances, which is really, really strange. Well, Rojava has been eliminated pretty quickly, so I guess I should be happy that their alliance went away. And now Sudan is eating Eritrea. Only reason Ethiopia isn't doing it is because they haven't declared war in Ethiopia yet. But of course, they declared war on Saudi Arabia, of all things. What kind of decision was that? Now Eritrea is declaring war on Lebanon, because this makes sense. I'm just going to start condemning them, because they're just declaring war on everybody, which is going to get them killed. Is this like a new, and uh, now Comoros, is this some sort of new AI feature to just declare war on literally everybody? Look at this. Their domestic approval rating has hit rock bottom. What makes the AI decide I'm going to declare war on just everybody in my general vicinity all at the same time after literally nothing has happened? It's not even a sandbox. It's a campaign. I've never seen this behavior before. In SRU, certainly not. 2030, is this like a new AI behavior feature? I'm so confused. Okay, so now Turkmenistan, who I was also allied with, I know that I was, I'm pretty confident that I was, just declared war on Iran. I didn't have to hit anything for them to not be allied, so I'm gonna guess that they are now going to start declaring war on literally everybody? I am so very confused by this behavior. The world volatility, none of the settings are any different from any of my other campaigns. I guess this is probably part of some... something that has been done to change the AI, but I don't understand why I'm losing my alliance with the aggressor. Does it have to do with the fact that I have an alliance with the defender? Because that definitely was not a feature before, and that doesn't even sound right. Well, Eritrea's fallen. It's dead. Every aggressor nation's just dying. Iran's pushing into Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan hasn't declared any other wars, but Iran is still just pushing into them. And other than that, we're just sitting here trying to somehow figure out how to become self-sufficient as China. And now Turkmenistan is part of Iran. That really didn't take too much longer. <laughs> A lot of my rubber facilities, my plantations are finishing. Roughly almost half of them have finished. We're starting to get a good amount more production in, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back online these 44 facilities because I can't really single them out, just so that's figured out. And then we're going to scrap 44 of the synth facilities, thus permanently saving on maintenance costs once that is done. Another thing that I haven't really been commentating on as I've been doing it is I... Decided to change my mind and to not upgrade a lot of these units, just sell them like I did in the Russian campaign because at this point I'm living more off the money of others than the money my own country generates. And I've noticed a problem with the AI that is exclusive to 2030 is, for example, I could tell these guys right here to reserve. 
and they sit still. Tell them to sell, and they sit still. If I move them first, and then tell them to sell, one of them sold. Let's try moving them again. Tell them to sell. Another one. Okay, there you go. And so, there's just this weird, and this didn't happen in my previous playthroughs, there's this weird thing with the AI where they just won't respond to my commands. I've told these guys to fucking reserve about 10 times now. It's just I have to do it in this very specific way. Tell them to move. Now they're moving. How about you sell now? I think somebody sold. Tell them to move. Okay. And now sell. Okay, we got another one. I just have to keep repeating that over and over again. They respond to pretty much all commands like this. So I have like no control over my AI right now either, which just makes this whole thing even better. Even on top of all the free money I'm getting and whatnot, I've also taken out four more bonds of roughly 80 billion each. I'm currently maintaining my, a credit rating, sort of. It's going down slowly, but I'm definitely not making enough money through sales to keep my government up, but I am trying more and more things as we go along. Again, most of this rubber's finishing. As more of it finishes, I could get rid of more of this synth. I'm just waiting for the rest of it to finish to get a really good idea of what I'm dealing with here. I would like to make some more ore mines. It's not an amazing good to sell. We don't even make enough of it for us right now with 43 mines. So more mines would be theoretically a pretty good idea. Let's just hit uh, the recommended spot. Oh, maybe we don't want it right there. Not on top of one of these spots. Okay, this is why I shouldn't hit the recommended spots. Okay, let's just do this manually then. We'll go find some spots to go place some down. Like right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, well that was simple. And then... Ah, getting this up to like 60 might be necessary. Oh, actually, more than 60 if this is the difference. But there's another four... We're now making 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And that brings us to like roughly 60. So we're going to just build that for right now. See how that affects my finances. And then we'll go from there. Because we've got to keep building stuff. Especially stuff that doesn't take too long to make. But can help our finances in the long run. Because I still don't know if there's a playthrough here. I have to get over the hump of getting a low GDP nation's finances in check and that's in addition to the world going fucking mad and a lot of my units just not responding to me another resource that could be potentially useful and really isn't very expensive to build any of is timber there's not a lot of supply out here or some of these spots also just can't be used but there's a lot of timber locations out here potential timber locations that we could definitely start building up because there's not a lot of any other resources out here so even just the bare bones additional production of timber because remember it does produce passively would theoretically start to help us i don't want to go too crazy here i see a pretty well-defined border here that we can build up so we'll go ahead and build that up no supply or engineer yeah supply here is pretty bad though still it'll work dude i feel like where my mouse is and where i'm trying to click is less responsive recently and i don't know why but there. That's a pretty good border. We're building 70 more of these things. That should be enough to increase timber production to sell for reasonable prices to our people and the market. If it seems more profitable, we'll see. It goes into, like, opportunity status back and forth. Can't make up its mind. Uh, coal's another one, but we'll see how this goes first, and then we'll go from there. Rubber's ending at a pretty good place, so I'm gonna go ahead and scrap another 25 synths. I want as little of these as possible. Get rid of those costs as we still have 12 more rubber plantations finishing a single plantation can produce as much as a synth can we had 144 of these at the start we're about to have over 100 rubber plantations so who knows we may be able to mostly replace the synths with normal production which would be much cheaper oh my god but at this point i really don't even know what could save this fucking country i don't know what it is about 2030 and low gdp nations but they're just so unsustainable as i continue to try to find the sweet spot of taxes and prices for goods and whatnot my demand is just being stoked for things so as you see the timber bars are actually getting closer and closer so we might actually want to build more timber than we're building these ones are already building slowly because of the lack of supply up here but i think i'm going to expand the production of timber mills up here just because we can definitely manage it Although we are limited up here in what we can place just due to supply. Once things do start getting placed over there, supply will follow just naturally. So that's really no big problem. 
That will solve itself. We have other patches to build in. We'll definitely need some upgraded timber production to keep up with the increasing demand. And then, you know, if shifting more and more and more into sales and happy population doesn't solve the finances, then uh-oh. I haven't spoken about this yet, this whole playthrough, but this has been happening. All the allies I've made have been sending units to kind of like, I don't know, garrison my territory or something. And they keep just gathering in these little spots. Like they land at Sanya and then they stay by Sanya. Same thing over here at Haiko. Same thing right over here. Even naval ships are coming to my waters, but only at the landing spot. Supply trucks over here from like Venezuela. There are so many countries that have landed over here by, I don't even know, by Wendeg. And they just gather up and they just stay in these big, big piles. And for the love of anything and everything, I don't know why they're doing it. Electricity is now more expensive to produce than it is to buy. So I guess I don't really need to invest very much into that at all. Only reason indie goods are probably slightly higher to buy than make is because I'm using so fucking many of them with my building generally. I'm not doing a fuck ton of building. One thing that is staying a opportunity good somehow is coal. So I think it makes some sense if I decide to build some more coal. So we'll plop some down around here. Just this little patch. However many fit here. I'm deconning some coal plants here. More may open up and I'll stick them there if it does. But let's just get more things that would profit me building if i just do this and i only do this then that can only be good i'm adjusting my budget fucking constantly but let me tell you this no matter what i do no matter what transitions into trade what transitions into anything i have yet to exceed 24 billion daily income my daily expenses are pretty variable from anywhere even if i lower the spending from anywhere to like 27 billion to 40 billion and that is while I've been reducing my social spending, that's while I've been reducing my taxes, that's while I've been selling more and making more profit. I have never seen it be this hard. Oh, thank you, Russia, 12 billion to maintain a country. Like I'm living off just the goodwill of the international community. If they stop to exist, I stop to exist. It wouldn't necessarily help my income to get more oil going. The market for oil usually isn't very favorable for selling, but with 30 gas fields and a singular derrick, we're not even making half of what we use and like sell to our own people and just use in our factories. So we could definitely save some money on the vast amount of oil transactions. I mean, we have such a huge stockpile as it is. This is not really a priority since our stockpile is just so fucking high. I will. However, go around trying to find places. You know, I wish I could tell if that's all that's going to fit here. What else is placed here? Petrol power plants, I see. Well, let's just say we don't need those. So we can check back here some other time, see if more fits there. Again, power is just getting pretty cheap anyway. But I figure I'll place some build capacity down. Not a whole lot, just some. Anywhere I find that it fits. This is another location where more might fit. We already have five here There's a power plant though. We'll just we'll scrap that and so what does that leave us to right now? We're building 15 more. That's a reasonable expansion Just a little bit to kind of get it more in a positive number with this stockpile We're not really losing any to buying theoretically anyway, so this is really not a priority commodity and then this isn't something that will really help building more uranium mines but it can help it can potentially help we don't need to sell it it's not very profitable it doesn't move in any large bulk or anything but if we get self-sufficient on it and we barely have any to really build anyway in our whole nation then it's just one of those things that could save us a couple extra dollars pretty much guaranteed and not ever be unprofitable, no matter how much of it I build with our very limited stockpiles to build from. Hell, I could probably build all of this in one go. Yeah, I could. I will. The other nations in the world are being quite generous with the amount of money they give me recently. I mean, that's more right there, coming from the good old Taliban. Quite the opposite of what's happened in real life, huh? 
feel like I'm entering their Belt and Road Initiative. But that's all the uranium down there. It's a little bit more up here. I could definitely, I would love to have access to some more resources, but I can't afford to wage a war. I know because I've tried this already. I've already tried this as Russia. And as Russia, the moment I tried to wage war, that was it. There was no recovering from my finances. I was in like a death spiral of finances. So this is what we're doing for now. One good thing is that our new escort ship, the Tiensons, come in as well as a couple other newer things. Not a grand amount of them. We've mostly researched like missiles and stuff. Got all those in. The bigger ships and planes and whatnot, those are still researching. We haven't expanded our research capabilities or anything, but I got research sharing a while ago with America. I don't think I actually shared that information, but I got research sharing with them. So they're just handing me a bunch of technologies while I just research some designs that I want. I have not decided to stop making things. I like making things, so I have been doing that. I've been making things. I've also just been seeing what the AI likes to make. They like MLRs too. We now make enough metal ore, now that we've finished all those ore mines. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this region up here with some more metal ore mines as well so that we have enough for anything to come and we may make more of a profit, test to see if the market can stretch a little bit more. Doesn't seem to have much problems, this market. Also, just because it's one of the only resources we have up here that we can build that isn't like timber or agriculture. So I just figure, get the mines built. I plan on building a lot of stuff on top of them and just around here in general because shit, dude, I need to export. And so long as AI still have money, I can survive. I haven't had to take out any new debt in a while. So that's always good. But I'm accepting free money, like from Myanmar there, four billion, like crazy. The AI is maintaining their money. It seems, at least most of them, they seem to maintain their money way better than when we were Russia. So low GDP countries still don't bring in like the tax revenue that I'm used to or something. That or things just cost more. I'm not sure. Because no matter how I try to get the money, I get the same exact amount of money no matter where I try to pull it out of my economy. So no matter what, it's like, I'm just kind of stuck. But the room to grow does seem to be there. It just, maybe it will take a while to reach it. This is completely unsustainable for multiplayer. I'll tell you that. Because there's no way you could just ally with everybody in multiplayer and then sit here for a couple years or something trying to just become completely exporting and self-sufficient in hopes that the global economy doesn't collapse and bring you down with it. One way I've gone ahead to try to sustain myself is I actually amassed a good amount of military goods. I sold most of them just to get some more cash infusions, anything to really keep me afloat at this point. There's constant fighting that I hear, but I don't really know who the fighting is between. Like a lot of nations have lost stuff without actually being at war. I have noticed some like border skirmishes between some nations like Russia and Finland are constantly going. I assume there's other things just happening at sea somewhere in canals, maybe pathfinding problems. I don't know. I don't really have an explanation for why every fucking nation in the world, nearly half of them, are just constantly finding ways to lose people and to kill others. Like, I really don't know. But yeah, I also started building satellites at some point when I was like in the worst financial situation I've been in this whole fucking playthrough because I was just like well at that point you know just why not let's just build some fucking satellites so I started building some satellites so it looks like those are starting to finish I don't even remember where the fuck satellites are at this point here they are uh, I think yeah it's a communication satellite we have missile defense satellites so of course I'm building those as well otherwise um, this is what I've been doing I've actually been recording for like almost three hours not as long as I've recorded that one time I was playing as Russia where the whole world just fell apart no matter what I did. This is looking more promising than Russia ever looked, honestly. So long as I don't declare war, I think I can stay afloat so long as I just pause, you know, just every day I take time to take some money out. Maybe I can spin this around. I'm really not sure, but we do have a full episode right now and I'm so unsure on like whether I should even continue this because the finances are just so bad no matter what I try. I've tried like 10 different strategies. I just haven't shown them all. You know, there's like a 30 minute video I've been recording for three hours. So a lot of stuff has happened that I just haven't shown off, but I'm sustaining enough. So let's give it a shot. You know, let's go bring this into another episode and let's see if we can turn this around and make China work 
and then see if we actually have any hope of completing this campaign. Because if not, it's going to have to be high GDP only. Because I don't really know what they did to low GDP countries in this game. But I'll try. As time inefficient as this is, I'll try. So hopefully you guys are at least enjoying watching me struggle with the very weird state of low GDP countries in this game. For now, thank you guys very much for watching and I hope I'll see you on the next one.